This is Dr. Benai Prasad. I'm Associate Professor at the University of California, San Francisco, and I'm back with another video by demand. So these are the five books you should read before medical school. But let's be honest, if you haven't read them before, you got to read them at some point in your medical career. These are five spectacular books about medicine. And I wish I could have made a different video called The Five Books You Shouldn't Read and that are highly overrated. Unfortunately, I can't do that video. I'm going to get too much blowback if I tried to do it. Disclaimers. This is my list. If you don't like it, you make your own list. That's all I have to say for that. This is my list. These are the books I like. I've read a lot of books in medicine, and these are the five that I think really are accessible for somebody who hasn't yet entered the profession and really do have something valuable to say. So, five books to read. No particular order. Here they are. Henry Marsh Admissions. Oh, this is a good book. This is Dr. Henry Marsh, British neurosurgeon, recently retired. And Admissions is his second book. He came after Do No Harm, which is also great. But in Admissions, he's at the height of his powers. You know, this is Marsh talking to you about medicine in unflinching honesty. All of the blemishes, inconsistencies, frustrations of a career. And he goes out on a high note. I mean, he really goes out in a spectacular way when he ends his career. And he is lamenting his entire medical career, thinking about the good things and thinking about the bad things. And there's nobody who's more honest about mistakes, getting things wrong, shortcomings, inadequacies than Henry Marsh. Spectacularly written. And, you know, Dr. Marsh is one of the rare neurosurgeons who can write a coherent book. Neurosurgeons, it turns out, have written many, many medical books, and many of them are not spectacular and are really flawed and have very simplistic themes. But unlike that, with Marsh, you're going to get a very thoughtful doctor reflecting on a career in a thoughtful way. You won't want to miss this one. This is a spectacular book. Less Medicine, More Health by Gil Welsh. Now, this is also a great book for someone who has yet to enter the medical field. You know, Dr. Welsh is trying to take you down a road of seven assumptions that you might have, that finding things early is always better, that acting upon something is always better than just watching it. These are assumptions that are just built into who we are. They're built into human beings. They make sense in many other domains of life. For instance, auto repair. If you're the kind of person who takes care of cars, all of these assumptions are probably things you believe in wholeheartedly. But do they make the same sense in biological systems and complex systems like the human body? And that's what Welch will take you to task on. And I think this is one of the great books that is really broadly accessible and can make some of the themes of Dr. Welch's academic work accessible to a broad audience. And I think you can really read it master it even before you've entered into medical school. So it's again, it's on my top five list. The Truth About Drug Companies, Dr. Marsha Angel. Marsha Angel, of course, had a short uh, tenure as the editor-in-chief of the New England Journal of Medicine, and she was spectacular at it and wrote a number of very important articles in her much longer career as an editor at the New England Journal of Medicine. The Truth About Drug Companies is the book she wrote when she was done with that job, when she had stepped away from it. And this is really sort of a an important look behind the curtain of sort of the tactics the industry uses to get your allegiance and to potentially mislead you about some of their products. Um, you won't want to miss this book. I think it really encapsulates nicely some of the fundamental issues that go on in drug development. And it was written more than a decade ago, but it is still as relevant today as it ever was. And so I think this is a book broadly accessible and will actually give you a good grounding in the pharmaceutical industry before you begin medical school. America's Bitter Pill. Oh, this is a great book, Stephen Brill. And I believe Stephen Brill still holds the record as the longest word count Time Magazine story, which was actually woven into America's Bitter Pill, this book. This is a great book about how the backroom politics and the lobbying actually drive healthcare bills and how policy bills really are the best compromise we can come up with, but that's an incredibly flawed compromise. And I think there's maybe just many gems in this book, but one gem that's worth noting is the MLR, the medical loss ratio. That has to do with the percentage of earnings an insurance company must spend on beneficiaries versus the percent they can retain as profit. Now, it's really important that you understand that concept because when you understand that concept, you will understand the industry's incentives in a way that, you know, to be honest with you, many doctors don't understand that and they don't understand the incentives. And that's why they say foolish things that are incorrect on Twitter and other places. But if you read this book, you will understand it and you will not say such foolish things. So I highly recommend this book. It's a great overview of the American political system and insofar as that affects health policy, you're going to want to know about it. 
and Ending Medical Reversal. That's right, shameless plug, the book that I co-authored now about five years ago. Why do I like this book? Well, of course, I'm biased. I wrote much of it with uh, Dr. Adam Seath with the University of Chicago. We wrote all of it. Um, but the reason I think it's really important is that when you go through medical training, you're going to read a certain type of history. You're going to read the history of medicine as the textbooks tell you that history. And that's a history where we start with what we're doing. We look backwards and we think about all the incremental steps that led to what we're doing. And that's how the book presents itself. It makes it seem as if modern medicine was inexorably driven by the medicine that came before. It whitewashes many aspects of medicine, all of the missteps, the false promises, the things we did for many years that turned out not to work. Now, Ending medical reversal is not the antidote for everything you're going to learn, but it is one tiny snapshot, one slice of things that we were doing over a period of time, often decades, that turned out not to work. These are stories that don't make medical history books, don't make the textbooks, and if you don't know these stories, you'll have a, I think, inadequate understanding of medicine. You'll have a woefully inadequate understanding of what medical progress really is like. And so I think this is a book that we tried to make broadly accessible that will actually give you a better idea that there are different ways in which progress happens in medicine. It's not always linear. It's not always advancement. There's a lot of stuttering and stopping, stepping one step up and two steps back. And that is the challenging history that doesn't make the textbooks that you're going to want to read here. And that's it. If you like this video, you can give it a like, you can subscribe to this channel, you can tell a friend. And behind my face, since I'm just new to this, behind my face is a plug for the podcast, Plenary Session, where I talk about all these issues and more and in great depth. You won't want to miss that.